action. <sighs> All right, we're gonna start piping in the stack, but usually you wanna know your toilet locations and your sink locations, the height, everything like that before you pipe in your stack so you can put your T's in the, put proper. Your T's in the proper height with grade of pitch. With the laundry, it's not that big of a deal because we're gonna stay as low as possible. There's a maximum and minimum for your um, stand pipe distance. I think the minimum is 18, the maximum is 48 from the trap weir to the top of your, to the inlet of your laundry pipe. Usually if you keep it somewhere close like that, you're not gonna have a problem. You don't want it too short because suds can come up and overflow out of the pipe if your stand pipe is too short. But normally I like to put my washer boxes at 48 to the center. And then also you have to consider where in the stud bed you're gonna be putting it and how your trap is gonna run. So normally we're gonna be behind the wall. This isn't a big deal here, but let's say this is an actual wall and we have to drill our pipe through the wall and bring a trap. You gotta make sure when the trap inlet the trap weir comes through, your U-bend will make it to your to your inlet here without having to cut through a stud or something like that. So normally, I'll put the hole here on my right side and keep it to the right side of the stud so I can bring a piece here and then put the trap in the wall and it ties in right alongside the stud coming up the standpipe. This is, instance, it doesn't really matter because we're gonna be behind the wall and I'm gonna swing into the wall with a trap and hit, hit our um, hole for our, lawn, for our washer sink, I mean our, Washer, washer wall box. Or washer wall box. So I got my mark at 48. I got my tabs that give me a half inch reveal. And we're gonna screw it in. And that's nice and tight. That's gonna be there. Our, our kitchen sink's gonna be up there. So it'll be a four by two for the laundry. A four by two of the bushing for the lab. That's gonna go right there, the bathroom sink, which is probably gonna be finished height. I like to do uh, for the drain finished height. I like to do 21. So after tile, you know, before tile and everything, you can go 22 or whatever your, your distance from your rough floor to your finished floor will be. And then we will go another four by two for the kitchen, and then we will bush down. We got. Three inch stack will do most of this stuff, but I like to try to keep it four inch for a little bit for more airflow on a single stack system, but we'll bush it after those three hits. So the bushing is to convert from a four inch to a three inch? Pipe. Gotcha. Yeah. We'll go four by three. And then I think it's gonna be our tub. We'll pick up, which is a four, which is a three by two, but we'll put a bushing in because it's cheaper to buy a three by two with a bushing than it is to buy a three by inch and a half T, believe it or not. And then we'll go three inch for our toilet. And then we'll go three by two for our lav. And we'll keep going up after that, but you'll see. So right now, I'm just gonna cut my four by two in as low as possible for our laundry over there. I got my mark here, which is gonna be a, a flush cut piece or a, a makeup piece, we call it. After we do the laundry, we want to make sure our next fitting isn't too high for our lab. So we're going to take a tape measure and check the distance what it will be after we put that laundry in, which is 23 and a half on this already. So we're too high right now. So we really got to be, we got to make sure we're tight. I can get away with 23 on a lab or something like that after, you know, before tile. So we'll slam this first fitting down into the hub. That's another good reason why I didn't use this. Because it would have bumped us up even more, right. and then we wouldn't have been able to make our lab. So you got to take all that into consideration when doing the plumbing. What's my height going to be for that? What's my height going to be for that? Can I use this with a hub, or do I have to go straight into it with a piece of pipe and keep the distance lower? So I'm going to grab my glue and cleaner. I usually have to tape them together, primer, take a can, an empty can or something, and put only a little bit in there. If you're working with a full can of primer, you're gonna have primer all over the place. So that's a little secret right there. Put a little bit of primer in the can, duct tape them together. That way, when you go to primer or fitting and you take the applicator out, you can brush it off real nice and it's not dripping all over the place. You ever see plumbing when people have primer all over the pipes and stuff? It's because they, they got too much primer in their can. They're not shaking it off before they apply it. You know, that's a nice little trick to make your fittings look better is to don't use as much primer in your can. Mike, you want to talk about why you just put that two by four there? Because we're going off the old cast iron T. 
and they never leveled it correctly coming from the ground up. They never plumbed it up. So back in the day with cast iron, when you let an oakum fittings, you could put the cast iron in, cock it, and then let an oakum it, and it'd be fine. Well, with PVC, you can't really do that. It goes into the hub, and you're not cocking it too much to plumb it back up. So we're going off that cast iron. Our stack was going it's completely unplumbed. So I put this 2x4 shimmed in there until I get everything piped in to try to plumb our stack back up a little bit. So that's a little trick of the trade. Wedge something in there to plumb it up until you're done piping every all the branches in and then you take it out and it'll hold itself for the most part. All right, so we're here. We're gonna drill a hole for our toilet. We move, we're moving our toilet location. Oh, well, where is here? First floor bathroom. What we did first is figure out the edge of our vanity which is right there, we's, our center is right there. It's a 36 inch vanity, which gives us 18 inches. From the edge of our vanity to our rough wall is 32 and a half. After sheetrock, it'll be 32. So we'll do our, the center, which is 16 off the rough wall. Well, that'll be 16 and a half off the rough wall after sheetrock. Normally you want at least from the left side of the toilet to the center, or from the right side of the toilet to the center, either or, you want a minimum of 12 inches. Comfortable is 15 inches. Handicapped is, eight, is no more than 18 inches, no less than, I think, 16. Really, I like to put it at 15 for a residential house, from the left side or the right side to the center. Now, from the back to the center of the toilet flange, you want at least 12 inches, usually 12 inches, finished wall. So I'll go 13 off rough framing to the center of our toilet flange, of the back. We did the center between our vanity and our finished wall, which is 16 and a half, and that's gonna give us right where we wanna drill for our tool flange. I like to set my tool flange and pipe to it on the rough, and all you gotta do is shim it up to what your finished floor is gonna be. So in here, we're gonna do a half inch cement board, quarter inch mud, quarter inch tile. Our finished floor is gonna be about 17 inch thick, one inch thick, give or take. Usually, you want the flange sitting on top of the tile, Usually you don't want it anything less than flush or anything more than sitting on top of the tile. Else you're gonna have problems when you go to set it. We're gonna need a lot of wax when you go to set it. So normally, now that I got my holes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut some shims about uh, three quarters up, seven eighths up to sit underneath our flange. So I can drill my hole and screw our flange down and pipe to it. You can use anything that's water resistant. So not normal shims, basically. You don't want to, I mean, you can if you want, but normally I like to put something that's water resistant underneath it, PVC, copper, or something to shim it up with, you know, cut little pieces of seven eighths copper, something like that to, you know, make sure it's it doesn't rot out eventually. I like to use PEX because I always have it on my van. It's sturdy enough to use. So I'll cut usually four or five pieces of three quarter inch thick. All right, we're here, we're like 95% mostly done, our drain lines. Ooh, look who knows so much, huh? Well, it just so happens that your friend here is only mostly dead. There's a big difference between mostly dead and all dead. We got our stack going up. We got our T's off for a lav, a T off for the laundry, a T off for the kitchen, a T off for the toilet, a T off for the uh, the tub there that we don't have the traps not piped in yet because we don't have the tub um you're supposed to run t's off the vertical for stack systems because that's like if you run a y with a 45 it's not going to vent properly t's you have to run off the vertical just an fyi for all you people out there come upstairs we'll show you the rest of the bathroom so we got our three inch stack still coming up. We got a T for the lav in here. I threw a Y and a 45 in here for this Jack and Jill sink because I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna have to reinvent that because it's too far away. So I was able to throw a Y and a 45 in here because I'm gonna have a vent on the back end of that. I'm just gonna put a Studer vent under the, the sink. And then we have a T for our shower and a T for our toilet and then three inch through the roof. You see on this back side, you can kind of see the toilet and the shower. Once again, we, we don't have our shower set, so I haven't put the two inch trap in yet, but you get the gist. And that's where our vent goes through up there? Yeah, right through the roof. 
Poke the roof at 12 for your vent. What is that? When you're measuring for how far above the roof you should be with your vent, I was always taught, hook the roof, add 12. Gotcha. That's it for the drainage. Now it's time for the water. All right, so we're here doing the water. We, all of our water lines are ripped out. All we have is our main shutoff valve coming in. This will be sheetrock, but we'll leave an access panel here. The way I'm gonna run the system, I'm gonna bring my three quarter cold up into the four joist up here. Come over, come over, come over, come over. <coughs> Come over, drop into this wall. Well, I'm gonna pick up that tub right there with the, just the cold for now. Drop into this wall, run this whole wall, pick up the lab, the laundry. I'm gonna shoot this three quarter trunk line going up for the upstairs for the second floor bathroom. Keep running this wall with, we're talking three quarter blue here. Keep running this wall, pick up the laundry, pick up the kitchen right here. And I'm gonna come up over come over here and our water heater is going to sit right here and then from there i'm going to take my hot bring it up over and then run that wall and pick up everything on the hot side we'll run those two three quarter lines up for um the bathroom on the second floor you can run two fixtures off at one half inch line now with pex i like to run only one fixture off a half inch line because it's smaller inside diameter, it's not as much flow. But but copper, you can do uh, two fixtures off a of one inch line. I'll basically run three quarter all the way up to the last fixture. What I'm gonna do is, since we don't have the heat on in here right now and the house isn't insulated, I'm gonna put an air test on the water until we get it sheet rocked and we get the heat on at least 50 degrees or something so my brand new water lines don't freeze on me. Right. What size water heater are you thinking? This is a two and a half bath house. Really, it's just like a two bath house because there's this just a powder room in the basement. I'll probably just put a 50 in, and 50 is good enough for two bathrooms. All right.